In a time of global production, companies employing hardworking people make the products that define what it means to truly be American. Join me as I visit American manufacturing sites creating the most amazing products to learn how things get made. I'm John McCallumont, and I'm in Stanton, Virginia. Today, we're gonna see how this turns into this at Parker Bowes, and it's built in America. Historians suggest that the bow and arrow may have been used by man to hunt as far back as 50,000 years ago. The missile weapon lengthened the distance between hunter and prey and battlefield opponents. Those who understood its effectiveness gained the ability to conquer the known world. In the 16th century, gunpowder heralded the end of the bow's dominance. However, its popularity would not fade. Born and raised in the small town of Point Pleasant, West Virginia, Bob Eric grew up hunting and fishing along the banks of the Ohio and Kanawha Rivers with family and friends. It was these humble beginnings where his love for the outdoors began to grow into a way of life. I would not be here today if it weren't for Bob. Um, he was my teacher, my mentor. Um, his background in hunting, he started when he was just a boy. So he, his love of archery, uh, he brought it to his work. And so working with him side by side every day, um, I learned so much from him. Parker builds world-class compound bows and crossbows for the hunting industry, with over a half a million bow hunters shooting a Parker. Parker was started in 1996, and one of the most important things to, thing to Bob was customer service. After being a distributor, he got to know his uh, dealers, and uh, he realized what they wanted from a bow manufacturer. Most of us here take a great pride in having a product that's built in the United States and, and a lot of the folks here actually translate that into their personal life and their personal buying habits. Uh, so we try our best to support American products whenever possible. Parker builds their line of bows and crossbows in their Stanton, Virginia facility, where I-81 and I-64 meet. But the process starts right here in the panhandle of Florida in Crestview, where NC Manufacturing and their arsenal of CNC machines bust out the parts to create the Parker brand compound bow and crossbows. The support we provide Parker is uh, precision machining of all of their metal and composite components. So all of their risers, cams, idlers, pockets, uh, all of those metal parts are done by us here, as long as they're, they're uh, limbs as well. We do all the CNC machining for Parker Bose, and it's much more than that. I mean, we machine all their metal and compound components, but we really view ourselves as an extension of Parker's company. It's, we're not just a separate entity that machines product for them. We work extensively, so we're one of their vendors that's a seamless manufacturing supply chain. Because Parker's benefits, our benefits, and the more we work with Parker to better their product, to better our process and theirs, benefits us all. From here, it's off to Rutherfordton, North Carolina, the home of Outdoor Color, where each part goes through a painting process with original designs and patterns. Parker Compound Bows has been a quality customer for Outdoor Colors for over 20 years. Um, they are one of the innovators, in my opinion, uh, in the crossbow market. 
Um, we've done uh, several different colors uh, over the years for them and have really appreciated the partnership. We work well with the personnel at Parker Compound Bus. At Outdoor Colors, we are a hydrographic printer. It's uh, widely used throughout the world for automotive, uh, consumer electronics, household items, sporting goods, intricate, detailed products like Parker Bow compound limbs uh, that have uh, enormous amount of uh, cutouts. After being painted, all of the parts are shipped to Stanton, Virginia, where the compound bow and crossbows are assembled, tested, and boxed. So we've seen all of the components manufactured and we've seen how it's going to look, but this is really where it all comes to life, isn't it? That's exactly right, John. All the components come in here manufactured, decorated. We bring them in this facility, go through production, and goes right out the door on the other side of the building. Oh wow, so it's kind of like a circle. That's exactly like right. Like a circle of life. That's exactly right. Well, that's really cool. It's, we have to be very efficient in what we're doing. Uh, we have to have a very uh, dedicated flow to how we do things. And so when it comes, it, com it makes a whole lot of sense to come in one door and go out the other. Well, it really does. Now, are, are you building um, crossbows and compound bows year round? Actually, we're one of the unique manufacturers out there, and we do build both compound bows and crossbows, and we are doing it year round. Uh, we have a heavier time of the year, early in the year, where we're trying to get product out to all of our dealers, our thousand dealers around the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they buy early in the year so they can have it in their stores all year long. Mm -hmm. And then later on in the year, we start manufacturing for those quick sales, refills, making sure the stores don't run out of inventory. So we've got stuff that is being going to be produced now, put on the shelves, and when dealers need it, we're shipping it right away. So what are we seeing right here? Where, 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 what, are we, what are we starting with right here? This is where it all happens. We have two separate segments to this production area. We have a compound bow area and we have a crossbow area. This side is our compound section. We're going from risers, assembling limbs and cams, putting it on the press, putting the strings on it, then it's out the door as a finished product. How long does it take one of these guys to fully assemble one of these bows? Go start to finish, it only takes just a little while. We're talking of just a couple hours. We try to be efficient in what we're doing. We're doing little runs of, of assembly. We're doing a little bit of runs of assembly here, and we're doing runs of assembly on the bow press. So Really, uh, not a big shop, a, a really small, concise shop of a lot of guys working together you know, very well. Absolutely. Yeah, it, and it's, that's what it's about. It's about being lean, it's about being efficient, and it doesn't take a long time to do these things. As long as we've done the work ahead of time, getting the components in here, we've got them all in the right position, we've got the right parts to do what we need to do. Now, I know you guys offer a lifetime warranty. How does that work? Lifetime warranty is to manufacturer's defect for materials or workmanship. We have a lot of confidence in our lifetime warranty. The reason we have a lot of confidence is because we see everything that happens. We get our hands on it. We get to touch it, feel it, and see it before we even put our name on it. We believe in our product. It's that, it's that simple. Now, I hear a rumor that with that lifetime warranty, you guys if I have a problem with a bow, you guys try to turn it around in 24 hours. Absolutely. It's very important, especially when you get into the hunting season, mm -hmm. that you're back in the field as quickly as possible. We encourage all our customers to reach out to us. You can call us, you're going to get a, a representative on the phone. You're not going to talk to a machine, you're not going to have to push a bunch, a bunch of buttons. You're going to talk to a representative. We're going to find out what happened, how it happened. We're going to take care of it right away and get you back out in the field as quickly as possible. Right over here is where all the crossbows are put together, correct? This is the very start of the crossbows. Very cool. I, I've got to see this. This is this is going to be fascinating. We start this process with the limbs and the cams. And what we're doing is we're taking these materials, limbs and cams, and putting them together. Small, quick assembly. Very nice. And this is a finished product right here, isn't it? How many of these do you put together today? 
Hundreds. Hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> you dream about these at night, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Wow. Very, very nice. And from here, where do we go? From here, what we're going to do is we're going to add those limbs to the riser. Mm -hmm. This is a riser. This is basically a handle of a bow. If you were to shoot a compound bow, it would be facing just like this. Mm -hmm. Once those limbs come on onto the riser, you're starting to look a little bit more similar to a crossbow front end. Yeah, now you're really starting to see, you know, the whole thing take shape at this particular point. That's right. And of course, from here, do we get the stock? From here, we get the string. The string. The next thing is the string. This is this is the money maker. Ah. This is where we're putting the string on the crossbow, putting the power behind the punch. So how do we know that there's enough power on this? Yeah, every crossbow front end gets put on a scale. Oh, really? Uh, and it's drawn back. What that scale tells you is it makes sure that we have the right strings and cables with the right twists, we got the right limbs and the right cams are all put together the right way. So we're about to find out how good you are, aren't we? That's right, that's right. <laughs> all right, so let's check this out. So this is actually the scale. This is the scale. So we're gonna pop that on. You're gonna pull down, and, and, and what are we looking for? What is the key number? Typically what we look for in these is roughly about 170 to 175. So okay. we that variation there. And all I do is pull down. And that one measures 171.6. So that's a good one. Let me, can I try that? I wanna see how Absolutely. hard that is. Let's see, I'm gonna pull down on it. That is a little hard too, isn't it? Look at that. Actually, that's not hard at all. That is just... You get that some good a, tricep work there, John. That is. I'm going to get my workout in right now because that is exactly what that is. And that is beautiful. So you now know that this is ready to go to the next phase. Yes, sir. We're ready to, we're ready to put this and marry it with a stock with the right scope on it. Then it's a finished skew, ready to put it on the shelf and ship out the door. So really the heart of a crossbow is the trigger, right? That's the most important feature on every one of our crossbows. And this is where we're doing it, each and every one of those triggers, isn't it? Every trigger is made by hand. Every wow. piece is put in there by hand. And the trigger is the most important technologically advanced part of our crossbows. And we use the same trigger setup across our line. No matter if it's the highest end crossbow or the lowest end crossbow, we use the same trigger. And the reason we do that is because it's so important. It's important that it has to work properly and it's important that it's a safe uh, mechanism. Did you run through your checks? Yep. Like I said, I've already checked it in here without the rail on for the anti-dry fire. And then you're checking the trigger to make sure it doesn't go off with the safety up. Mm -hmm. You put it down, make sure the anti-dry anti fire is still not going off, and then you release it. Nice. And then what's the last step? Oh, look at this. What is this right here? That'd be my name. That's your name because you built this. Custom built by Ian Hammer. So now that I know that this has been custom built by Ian Hammer, can I take this with me? Yes, you can. Taking this with me, we're going to put it together the rest of the That's way, right. aren't we? Let's go put that on a stock. It's a cool name he's got there. That's right. I like that. <laughs>
Once Billy finishes putting it in the stock, he's gonna do the same cycle test. So this is cycle test number two. We've got one more step to make it to a finished crossbow. Take this with us? Absolutely, let's go, let's go. So to finish that off, we need to add a scope to it. Mm. So what is the process of adding a scope to this? I guess I hand it to you first, right? <laughs> All right. There's a couple different steps involved here. Uh, first and foremost, when you put the scope on, you gotta make sure that it's level. You That's make sure important. the left and right, your up and down's all level. Absolutely. Nothing like looking at a crooked scope. Dude, we're going to sight it in. We're going to bore sight it, laser bore sight it. Wow. We have a laser that's attached to the end of the arrow. Mm -hmm. We're going to slide it in just like you would be loading a trigger if you were getting ready to fire. He's adjusting those turrets up and down, left and right, making sure he's getting a, in a close range there with the laser itself. He's good to go. See if you're any good. Look at that, he is dead on. Very nice. So when a customer buys this, I mean, it's, it's ready to go. Yes, sir. Uh, it's a unique feature that we have. So our customers don't have to spend a lot of time sighting in a scope, going back and forth to the target, moving, removing arrows, shooting and shooting and shooting. Two or three shots, they're dialed in for their specific site. Then we got all the uh, safety stickers on and everything like that. After this, it's pretty much ready to be packaged and shipped. We're ready to, to marry it to a front end and put it in a box. So basically, if I was to get one of these delivered to my house, mm -hmm. this is exactly what I would see? Yes, sir. You basically have two parts and a parts kit. We have a cable slide, mm -hmm. two top screws, and a front screw. Grab the stock, and it's gonna slide right in the slide groove, or the cable groove right there. Slide that in, correct? That's correct. And it'll hit the groove in there. You put the string above the barrel. All right. Cables are in the cable slide groove. Now you're ready to press down on that thing. And all you gotta do is put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. As you're pressing down, you're gonna rock your hands forward and it'll slide right down onto the stop. Just like so. Simple as that. Now you're gonna add the front screw and the two top screws. All right. And you're ready to shoot. Every crossbow needs a rope cocker. Just put that right into the groove there. Hook your hooks over the string. I've got that thing nice and snug. Put your foot in the stirrup. Grab those two handles. And as you stand up, keep your arms nice and straight and draw it all the way back. Boom. Automatically goes into the safe position. You've got it cocked and you're ready to go. Put the cock vein down. It goes all the way back against the string. The tips of our capture knock will go back past the string. And if you can look through your trigger housing and see the tips of the knot go past the string. Yeah, it looks like it's centered perfectly. You know you got it loaded correctly. And of course, this is where this your is extra where, safety measures come in. That's exactly right. This is where we have an anti-dry fire built in the trigger. Mm -hmm. If the arrow is not there, the anti-dry fire is not depressed and it can't be fired. You get that all the way back, it pushes the anti-dry fire down. When you're ready, you're gonna flip it up on fire and pull the trigger nice and slow. You always want it to surprise you to go off. That way you know you're not punching the trigger. Right. Be more accurate and more consistent. Right. That's why I got it sighted in. I'll take the safety off. Oh, I just barely missed it. You know why? I was breathing too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that that's a pretty good shot. Incredibly accurate right there. That is amazing. I, I understand this in a controlled environment like we mm -hmm. are right now. I'd really like to see this in a different environment, an environment that would be more suitable to what you would really be experiencing when you're hunting. Most most crossbows, your effective range is 20, 30, and 40 yards, but I wanna try something a little bit different with you. Yeah. Well, let's go try a trick shot of 100 yards. 100 yards, I like let's that. Let's do it. Let's do it.
Did you see that? Oh, man. That is incredible. All built right here in America. And of course, if you want to see more on Parker Bose, all you have to do is go to builtinamerica.tv. You can see a whole bunch of behind the scenes footage and a whole bunch of cool stuff that you didn't get to see on the show. Oh, and by the way, if you know a company that has all of their stuff built in America, we want to hear from you. Just shoot us an email, go to our website and contact us. We'd love to feature them on the show. I'm John McCalmont, and I tell you what I'm going to do. I want to do this again. <laughs> we'll see you on the next Built in America. Man, that was freaking awesome. Come here, bring it in. <laughs> oh, that, this is some great equipment right here, man. I wanna, I'm going to sit down. Let's load another one up. Man, I, I got to fix my watch. <laughs>